One third of all food goes uneaten, while two billion people are facing food insecurity worldwide. While many things contribute to this issue, consumers are responsible for 40 to 50 percent of all food wasted in most high-income countries. And while shocking, it's good news. It means that we have the power to reduce the impacts of wasted food on an individual level. Food Waste Podvention is made possible through partnerships with Washington State University Vancouver's student-run radio station, Coog Radio, and the Washington State Department of Ecology. For questions about the information discussed in this episode, contact info at clarkgreennaybors.org. Hey everyone, welcome to Food Waste Podvention. I'm Austin with the Clark County Composter Recycler Program. And I'm Bethany with the Clark County Green Neighbors Program. We're AmeriCorps, serving the solid waste education and outreach team, and we're here to talk food waste in honor of Food Waste Prevention Week, a national sustainability campaign where 48 states, 11 countries, and over 600 organizations inspire their communities to stop food waste in the first place. Tune in to hear our experts speak. It's Food Waste Prevention Week. I want to welcome our guests for this episode, Shannon and Selena. Shannon is a Clark County Environmental Program Tech. She's worked with the county for three years and has her bachelor's in environmental science and global sustainability from the University of Virginia. Shannon supports the Compost Recycler Program, handles volunteer coordination, and is our go-to for all things savvy shopping. Hi, Shannon. Happy to have you on. Hello. Happy to be here. And Selena is our Environmental Outreach Specialist Senior Lead for the Green Business Program. She's been with the county for almost two years and has her bachelor's in earth science with an environmental geology concentration from the University of California, Santa Cruz, and she's our master food prepper. Thank you for being here, Selena. Hey, y'all. Excited to be here. All right. Thanks for joining us. Uh, We appreciate you taking the time to share your knowledge and experience. So to start our discussion, uh, we just wanted to ask both of you, would you like to tell our audience what inspires you to be a smart shopper? and prevent food waste. So who wants to go? Who wants to start? Go away, Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. What inspires me? I would say that it goes back to the values that were instilled in me as a child. My parents, they had four kids. So I'm one of four and um, they were very frugal with their shopping out of necessity and um, around the dining table, we were really taught to eat all the food that was given to us and to see it as a gift that we were lucky to have that food Mm -hmm. um, and not take it for granted. So I would say that that really did impact me and I think that the values are, are really the big reason why I like to shop smart and not waste food. Um, And an example is when I was in middle school Mm -hmm. and in high school um, around the the cafeteria lunch table. (laughs) um, If people were about to throw away their food because they didn't want it, I was sort of the the human trash can. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been called that myself. So yeah. I, I know how it feels. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it was some learned um, behavior from my dad. Um, but yeah, that that would be probably one of the big reasons. And then other than that, obviously saving money. I'm a big budgeter, mm-hmm. so it's nice to um, not be throwing away the food that I purchased mm-hmm. and paying for it to be hauled away. Um, and then also I, I really care about climate change and trying to make, uh, the least amount of harm as possible. So there are a plethora of reasons, but those are a few. It's a great thing you're on this show today then. (laughs) (laughs) What about you, Selena? Uh, yeah, Shannon, that was a very well-rounded answer. Um, my motivator is, is money. That sounds a little shallow. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But yeah, I mean, um, when you think about how, like, food is is in dollar signs, like, you don't want to be throwing away your money. Um, But also, kind of family ties, learned behavior. Growing up, uh, my grandparents owned, they just actually closed our family restaurant after 35 years. Um, But growing up in the family restaurant, you just, we just didn't waste our food uh, because it would have been offensive to my grandparents. But also, we were just taught not to waste food because Mm -hmm. that's, that's money. Like food is money and that's money would be taken away from the family. Um, so yeah, 
But besides that, um, I did grow up on a horse ranch and we happened to also have goats. Um, so we had lots of the five gallon buckets in the restaurant kitchen and all mm. of the food scraps went back to the goats at the end of the day. Um, <clears throat> so while we just didn't like to waste food, there was also something in place for that food waste to mm. not be going to the landfill. It was going back to the ranch. Yeah, we talked about that a little in episode one, upcycling for animal use being exactly. a great way to get rid of those, you know, extra compost materials that you produce in the household. Feed your friends, especially if they're goats. Yeah, totally. <laughs> well, yeah, and I just wanted to make a comment because, you know, it is it is quite an interesting mindset that a lot of us have where throwing away food um, or even just allowing food to go bad and then not really feeling any guilt about it to throw it away because it's like, oh, it, you know, it's bad. I can't eat it. Um, mm -hmm. But I guess I think about it this way. You know, what other resources do we utilize on a daily basis that if – if it were to be wasted or if it were to be like, let's say you leave your lights on all day or you have a leak in a pipe and you're paying now extra for water, like your first thought is like, okay, how do I need to be different or how do, how do I need to fix that? So I'm not paying this extra money for something I'm not using, mm -hmm. but we don't think that way about food or a lot of people don't. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really just changing their mindset about, mm -hmm. you know, this is a resource that you are paying for that you're just kind of letting go to waste. Mm -hmm. um, and, and not necessarily like feeling guilty, mm -hmm. but well, yeah. feeling empowered mm -hmm. that True. we have the power to change our actions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree yeah. with that. Also just questioning it. I think you're kind of like leading into that questioning things. My uh, University of California, Santa Cruz, they were really big on composting. So I mm -hmm. went from like, you know, composting on the ranch to going to UC Santa Cruz. And they're also really big on composting there. And they would give like the annual university report and it would be some somewhere in the like 30 tons of food waste that had been composted that year, which a lot of people I think were like, wow, that's awesome. Go us. And I was like, that's a lot of food. <laughs> Wait yeah. a second. I, I think I, I understand that that's like a good thing. Right. But also, should we really be composting that much food? That's a really big number. Like there shouldn't yeah. be that much food going to compost in the first place. Yeah. you should. I mean, you should be looking at like the the source. Like mm -hmm. why? Why is this happening? Why is there this much food waste? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. why we're here, folks. That's why yep. we're here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so another question for both of you guys. Um, what sort of things are you considering when you're shopping or meal prepping uh, with food waste prevention on the mind? Um, I will start with Selena this time. All right. <clears throat> um, I'm thinking about what's my game plan for the week and trying my best to stick to it. Uh, I really try not to go to the grocery store hungry or else it's just something that goes Dangerous. a little out of control. Game over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. It's also, I mean, a good and a bad thing that I, I genuinely enjoy grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. I think going to the grocery store is kind of like going to an amusement park. <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> Especially when you go to a new one outside of your neighborhood, like oh, not yeah. your regular grocery Ooh. store. Oh That's yeah. A, you can make a date out of that. That is a trip. <laughs> Definitely. If you're a big uh, grocery outlet shopper, mm, it, you never know what you're going to get a gross out. So totally. Yeah. That's actually, that's what I'm usually most excited about. I'm like, I don't know what kind of deals I'm going to find today, mm -hmm. but I'm excited to find out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like a little bit of roulette in your life. Like, yeah. who who isn't excited yeah. about that? Let's yeah. see what the store has decided I'm going to eat this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so having a loose game plan and sticking yeah. to it, you know, it's going to help save money. And, and, you know, you have the roulette to spice things up when it comes to meal prepping. Oh, definitely. What about you, Shannon? What do you kind of consider when you're going in and meal prepping with food waste prevention on the mind? Um, well, there are three main things that uh, come to mind. I usually think about the cost of mm -hmm. the food, um, the quality, and then how long it will last. Mm -hmm. And then I also I think about what I already have in my pantry yeah. and in my fridge um, because I don't need to repurchase food that I already have um, so that that will prevent food waste for sure. Yeah, one of the things that I've heard recently is to shop, shop your fridge, shop your pantry before you yes. actually go out and shop. Totally. And that's a really fun tip. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually do have a follow-up question. I'm just curious if you, which, which way you shop mostly. Do you like to utilize your freezer and like to shop things that, you, that will last a long time because you can just put it in the freezer? Or do you shop like fresh and stuff you're, you know that you're going to use or you're planning to use within like its usability time like it's week like the week 
That's a great question. Um, so I usually take more trips to the store and buy less things when I'm there. And so because of that, I can buy produce and fresh, fresh things um, more. And uh, especially if it's discounted produce. And if that's the case, then I definitely need to use it up quickly because it'll go bad. Um, but yeah. That's that's one of my favorites too. I always, I always like to find those red bags. Yes. Fred Meyer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely a mix. I have like my freezer portioned off um, for like, you know, half of it's full of salmon right now because I order a salmon share every year. Um, mm -hmm. There's wow. a, I think it's Ilamani, Ilamana is I'm, a I'm going to have to ask you more about this <clears throat> oh. at post, post podcast here. <laughs> you should. The salmon is amazing. I don't tend to shop for frozen produce sure. um, just because I don't have the room. I live with roommates mm -hmm. and we have a very small space. Mm -hmm. And so I simply can't like count on that freezer space. Mm -hmm. And so I just go to the store more and get fresh. Yeah. And I mean, that's a good point. And that's one of the things that me and Bethany try and talk about a lot is like, you know, there are so many different situations um, you know, there's, as far as equity goes, mm -hmm. like availability for freezer space, you mm -hmm. know, how much money somebody makes. Um, so it is kind of this, it is a larger question and a, a broader subject, mm -hmm. just talking about like how best we can approach food waste prevention. Um, it's not from the lens mm -hmm. of, of many different types. Yeah. It's not one size fits all. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. What Definitely works for not. someone may not work for someone else. So Great to have so many different perspectives, including your guys's on today's episode. Yeah. You're welcome to my freezer, Shannon. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll take the salmon. Um, what about what about me? Can I? <laughs> <laughs> um, and to Bethany and anybody else listening, I guess. <laughs> All right, Selena, I got a question for you. Uh, how has meal prepping helped you prevent food waste in your home? Uh, back to again having a game plan. Mm -hmm. um, my partner and I, we make we make the same variation uh, dish every week. It's it's supposed to be a pork cabbage dish, mm. and it ends up being whatever protein we actually have on hand and whatever <laughs> vegetables need to be in the <laughs> fridge. Um, but yeah, the spices are on point, so it kind of works for anything really. Um, so yeah, we we kind of joke that we're gonna make pork cabbage, you know, every every Monday night, but it's really not pork cabbage. It's kind of just the the garbage disposal meal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, hey, that, that's that's how you keep it out of the landfill. With that in mind, how do you ensure that you're maintaining a balance of nutrients when meal prepping? Because I've talked to you. I know that you care a lot about what it is that you're eating. Do you have any tips on how people can keep that in mind while going through their weekly plan? Yeah, uh, I don't remember where where I sourced this from, but I either read or heard somewhere uh, that you should always try to eat a bean, a green, and a protein. Uh, and that's kind of taken the guesswork out of shaping my my plate in terms of nutrition mm -hmm. and bean is pretty interchangeable i would think of that as a carb because i mostly sub it out for rice um or anybody on the team knows that i'm actually quite fond of beans so i'll actually just have beans and rice with every meal <laughs> <laughs> eat more beans yeah <laughs> eat more beans <laughs> definitely um but yeah keeping it to a carb mm -hmm. a grain and a protein um helps me keep a balanced plate yeah that was fantastic thank you uh shannon it's your turn what are your favorite local resources to finding low cost food options? Well, I am very big into the deals, as you all know. Um, so there are a couple things that I want to make note of. Um, there's this app called Too Good To Go. Um, and on that app, you can actually find things from different restaurants in the area that um, were maybe made today and they can't sell it tomorrow, but it's perfectly good food. Um, and so you can just buy it for a discounted price. Um, so you can look through the different options and see if anything um, piques your interest. I know that um, at my house, we have gotten a dozen bagels from a bagel a bagel shop and it was so cheap and like some of the best bagels I've ever had <laughs> so I would definitely recommend seeing if there's anything on too good to go because it's just a great way to get quality food for 
a portion of the cost. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing is uh, Daily Deals Market on St. John's Boulevard. I don't know if y'all have been there, but it's basically a liquidator store. Mm-hmm. And so you can get this these um, food items that um maybe it's past the date that's printed on the food item um but that doesn't mean that it's gone bad yet Mm -hmm. actually that date on the food doesn't indicate food safety at all unless it's baby formula that is the one thing that you actually do need to keep that in consideration um but yeah so you can go there i've gotten chips Mm -hmm. i feel like that's a really good place to get snacks like i got an entire bag of veggie straws for one dollar oh i haven't heard prices like that in a decade yeah right (laughs) i feel like they're like five dollars at normal grocery stores now so that's where i go for my snacks Mm -hmm. the produce can be a little iffy i'm not gonna lie and you'll notice that right when you walk in yes these are definitely vegetables for students (laughs) Yeah. Those are vegetables you should definitely cook. Well, unless unless you find some good ones and trust your nose. So mm-hmm. I'm not saying everything's off the table. Um, then another thing, grocery outlets. Grocery outlets. Awesome. Market. <laughs> yeah. I, I love grocery outlet. People mm-hmm. have already mentioned this today. But um, the wine there. That is where I get discount wine. Last time I was there, Mm -hmm. I got a $65 bottle of wine for $9.99. Less than $10. Yeah. Yeah. It was incredible. You know, you told me that, and then I went and was looking at the original price versus our price on every single bottle of wine, trying to find as good of a deal as you. It was insane. Yeah. I And then I also got a $60 bottle of wine for $7. Mm-hmm. And I've been trying them and they are very good. There's yeah. not a reason for that to be discounted, but you can benefit from that. Mm-hmm. So might as well go take advantage. Um, and then there's also a lot of vegan products there mm-hmm. that I've noticed. Um, that's where I've oftentimes gotten Beyond Burgers or Impossible mm-hmm. Burgers. Um, so, and oh, the vegan ice cream. The vegan ice oh, cream. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. It's like a dollar or a dollar fifty for a pint. Yeah. And at normal grocery stores, I feel like it's... $6. At least at least four dollars, mm-hmm. um, up up to maybe six nine. I don't. It's it's a lot of money, <laughs> and so, <laughs> it's a thousand dollars in this economy. <laughs> but yeah, so grocery outlet has a a lot of deals, um, but not everything is cheaper. So that's something to keep in mind. Mm-hmm. I've noticed that some of the produce is um, equal, if not a little bit more pricey than some grocery stores. So when I'm shopping, it's I, I oftentimes will stop by a store that's on my way back from a location. So if mm-hmm. I'm in the area of grocery outlet, I'll go and see what they have. And if I'm on my way back um, and I'm near Winko, I'll go check out their produce because mm-hmm. they have really good post prices on produce. Um, and then Fred Meyer, um, they have the discount produce and bakery items and miscellaneous items, honestly. And so just this week, Mm-hmm. No joke. This was a haul. I got <laughs> I got one carton of strawberries, uh-huh. two cartons of raspberries. Two. Berries are pricey. Yes. Um, two bags of potatoes and onions in their little red mesh bags, mm-hmm. a bag of apples, and then two uh, cartons of cherry tomatoes. And can I take some guesses as to how much that all cost? This was all in the discount section. $12. Okay, good guess. What's yours? $15. Okay, it was $6. (gasps) Whoa. Six. Yeah, that's right. Audible gasp. Yeah. Wow. Six dollars. I didn't ask Selena because she already wild. knew. Yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, so they, you can really find some steals. So my strategy is um, I'll sometimes go to the store and know that I want a vegetable mm-hmm. or a fruit, but I don't pinpoint exactly what it is. And I'm flexible based on what the deals are. Mm-hmm. But I know that I'll use it because I already like sketched into my um, meal plan that I needed a vegetable or a fruit. 
um when buying food i like to look at the cost per unit Mm -hmm. which is in fine print in the corner Mm -hmm. of the shelf tags at most grocery stores um that's just a really good way to to check the different brands and see what the better deal is Mm -hmm. and i oftentimes will buy store brand food if it doesn't matter or impact the quality of either that food or the dish that i'm Mm -hmm. making Um, And then I also just choose foods that are relatively cheaper than others. So, for example, even though I really, really love salmon and it seems like Selena found a good deal, I eat more tofu Mm -hmm. and beans than salmon just because that's cheaper for me. So not saying you have to do that. You have to weigh the pros and cons, like Mm -hmm. how happy does it make you and how much money do you want to save? So. Those are all amazing tips. May I also plug, I get all of my nuts from Grocery Outlet. Ooh. They have great deals on even like pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, all the additional things you'll throw into salads. Yeah. Really cheap. Really yeah. affordable. Yes. They also have really cheap chocolate bars. Yes, they do. But I have to avoid that a little bit. Oh, I don't. Because, <laughs> you know, you see the lower <laughs> price and you want to buy yeah. way more than you usually would. Oh, pros and cons and i just go for it <laughs> <laughs> along with the vegan ice creams exactly <laughs> and they also have dairy ice creams i'd like to add yes they they do have non-vegan options um it's a really great spot for like breakfast cereals too on the go bars so if you have little ones it's a really great way to get them like stuff to pack in their lunches at a really low cost as well this is not an ad. This is not an ad. <laughs> we're, we're not getting paid to say this. <laughs> I will also add, though, that Grocery Outlet's non-alcoholic beer fridge has come a long ways wow. and can also be bought at a bargain most of the time. Ooh, good to know. Good to know. So uh, an additional recommendation for helping individuals to shop smarter and prevent food waste is to find a way to make a list uh, that you won't ignore, something that's obvious, like maybe a notepad on your fridge or... Selena, I know you like to use whiteboards. Yeah, big on whiteboards in my household. Um, it's kind of our communal whiteboard. You know, it's it's either for writing out workouts or writing out what's in the pantry. Um, yeah, it's a great tool to use, especially if you live with other people mm-hmm. to figure out what needs to be eaten or what should be eaten. Um, and yeah, again, sticking to a game plan. If you're listening to this the day it comes out, we do have an event in person tomorrow at the uh, Cascade Park Community Library where we have these fridge magnets that have grocery lists on them. So make sure you come by and pick one of those up. That's a great way to see what you need when you're going to look at your fridge. So shop your fridge, shop your pantry, and then make a list and make it, you know, noticeable somewhere you can't just pass by it when you're on your way to the grocery store. Yeah, have fun with it. Sometimes we don't use words, we just use images. (laughs) (laughs) we'll upload a photo of selena's whiteboard (laughs) just kidding just kidding and uh i guess you know just so that we're clear Mm -hmm. because i feel like there might be some confusion with with this terminology Mm. um what do you mean by shop your pantry shop your fridge oh yeah i'm actually going to redirect this back at shannon because i think she might have some more insights into this definition that's a great clarifying question thank you Yeah. So when I'm mapping out what I want to make that week for um, my different meals, I like to first check what's in my pantry. What do I already have? Um, And then I take note of that and maybe that'll inspire me to pick what meals I create. And I also take a look at my fridge and my freezer and I just try to use up the items that are going to go bad. Um, or if I just don't want to have a bigger bill at the grocery store, I'm like, I already purchased this food. I might as well just use it. And so maybe even if I had thought about having a pasta and then I see I have a lot of rice, I could be like, oh yeah, maybe I will have a rice in a, a, a rice dish mm-hmm. this week. Um, or if I see that I do have Um, Some greens in my fridge, I might have a salad or something that involves um, sauteing the greens and um, including it in my my rice or Mm -hmm. something. So um, I really do like to take a look at what is already 
in stock at home. And then after that, you can build on your list and figure out what you need from the grocery store. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a great opportunity to be creative with it. Mm -hmm. Creative cooking is one fun mm -hmm. two saves you money and it also saves food from going to the landfill mm -hmm. um so it's great i agree uh tune into episode five where we'll talk more with uh our guest stacy tickner loy about how she does pretty much that looks in the fridge sees what she has and then finds different avenues to create something inventive and fresh out of that food mm -hmm. another question that we have is in in your opinion, are there any limitations to the to this idea of meal prepping and smart shopping? Like, do you think people uh, struggle in any certain areas? Yeah, I think I commonly hear time as a barrier when it comes to meal prepping um, and and shopping. You know, I I myself subscribe to a produce box because I can't be bothered to go to the grocery store as much as Shannon probably does <laughs> um, so you know like my my time can be bought in that way um, mm -hmm. and it's very convenient and also another roulette factor uh, getting a produce box delivered every other week it's like mm -hmm. you don't know what's going to come through um, and it can really shake up you know my pork cabbage dish it's probably not <laughs> going to be pork cabbage for like the third month in a row um, <laughs> yeah but uh, back to time um, yeah I think I hear a lot of people and like oh you, they hear that we meal prep and it's like wow you must spend like your entire weekend cooking like oh gosh no like again can't be bothered to to waste time like that um so i like to utilize appliances that make things easy um like the air fryer mm -hmm. uh the air fryer is a good one and it's the instant pot, pot. Yeah. yeah yeah like if you especially if you don't want to do dishes which i'm not a big fan <laughs> of doing dishes um you can saving throw, water yeah oh yeah. <laughs> let's lead into water conservation yes. with this one <laughs> uh but yeah you can throw every everything into the instant pod um mm. yeah one one pot dishes or, or instant pot savvy um and back to the air fryer i can cook chicken in there it's kind of just a season season and let it go on mm -hmm. the timer kind of thing um, all yeah. right those are great tips thank you yeah i just want to add that um another concern that might come up with f prepping food um is that it, it might go bad um mm -hmm. in a quicker amount of time and so that's just something that i like to keep in mind when i do meal prep mm -hmm. um so i'll only prep meals that i know can last for the certain amount of time that i need it for mm -hmm. um or i'll only prep part of it and keep like some of the vegetables uncut up so that i can do that and it's more fresh mm -hmm. um in the moment um but yeah, you can store items separately so it prolongs their shelf life too. Um, yeah. Yeah, tune into episode four where we talk about some of the better methods to store for your food so that it lasts longer. Like if you cut cabbage, it's not going to last as long as if you maybe leave it uncut for your meal that you have five days in the future, you know. Or if Unless you, you cook it. Yeah. Or yes. you live in a competitive household like I do, and then it's like, we can get to the cabbage first. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to ask, uh, what is one thing that you wish everyone knew about food waste? That there are options uh, when it comes to food waste. Um, I'm going to plug our We Compost pilot program here, where we're working to provide free curbside food carts food waste carts to folks that don't have access to them. Um, and back to options, as we've been trying to find these hub locations for our pilot program, we've found that um, people get creative with what they do with their food waste, whether they have a neighbor that's a backyard composter, friends with a local pig farmer that wants their scraps, um, or if someone's worms need some grub. Like <laughs> There are definitely options on what you can do with your food waste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we love to feed worms. <laughs> we do. We do. All right. Um, yeah, I know that this was mentioned a little bit in the beginning, but I just really I feel like it's worth emphasizing. So it's estimated that 40 percent of food is wasted in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing that I think is important to highlight is that over 44 million people in the U.S. live lived in food insecure households in 2022. That's super messed up super messed up and then um 
this is where it gets hopeful. So the households <laughs> are the largest contributor. <laughs> well, this isn't hopeful, but <laughs> households are the large <laughs> households are the largest contributor out of all of the sectors contributing to about 50% of food waste in the US. Um, and that might seem really dreary, but you know what? I see that as an opportunity. Um, we can do something about it. And even if it's just adopting one of the new habits that you heard from this podcast, that will help. And so that's something that I think that we need to keep in mind is that we actually can make a difference. And that's, and that's one of the things we love on this podcast is, is our call to actions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we hope that you're listening to this because you care and because you want to learn more and hopefully can take some of these tips and tricks and, you know, this knowledge that you've listened to and make a difference. Because mm -hmm. it, it really can start in the household. Mm -hmm. I mean, 50%. That's a lot. That is outrageous. And it's a lot different than um, a lot of the other issues we mention when we talk about climate change. So much of that can sometimes feel out of your control. Mm -hmm. um, but food is in your control. It's, you know, one of the first things you can do to help make a difference. So... Please continue listening as we explore some more tips and tricks and ways that you can prevent food waste in the household. And I'll kick it off to Austin to ask our last question. And finally, we like to end every episode with a personal reflection from our expert guests. What does food waste prevention mean to you? Uh, food waste prevention to me is not letting resources go to waste, whether that's your hard-earned money or the energy that went into uh, producing your food. Whichever angle you need to look at it from, uh, let's all figure out how food waste prevention looks to us. It means that I am a mindful consumer on the individual level and also aware of the larger system that needs to change to prevent food waste. It means fun out there recipes like banana peel barbecue, which I have tried before and I'd say it's okay. <laughs> and simple everyday habit building. Um, it also means that um, I need to be kinder to myself and understand that I can't overwhelm myself by trying to take on every single habit that we've talked about in this podcast. Um, and I need to have change um, that is more sustainable. So I just want to encourage everyone, be kind to yourselves while trying to be kind to the planet and to your wallets. Amazing points. Thank you guys both so much for sharing your expertise. It has been an honor to have you both on this episode. Um, for anyone who wants to learn more about meal prepping and smart shopping, stick around. We're going to talk about it more after the break, Austin and I. Uh, and thank you guys again. I appreciate having you on. Woohoo. This it's was so fun. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Thank you thank so you. much. Uh, and we'll be right back. The average family throws out $1,500 of food every year. That's a lot. Imagine what you could do with extra cash. There are simple ways to reduce your food waste and increase your savings. It starts with a meal plan, a menu, a shopping list, and ends with a little creativity, fresh recipes, ingredient swaps, and new kitchen skills. Get tips to reduce food waste and make your dollar go further. Know the cost. Go to usefoodwell.org to learn more. Once again, I'd like to thank Selena and Shannon for their conversation and their expertise on smart shopping and meal planning, um, you know, with the mindset and the goal of preventing food waste mm -hmm. in the first place. So as a reminder, high income countries, they tend to waste the most food on an individual level. So it's extremely important to be intentional with shopping. Um, and again, smart shopping, meal planning, all of these tips that we've talked about can help decrease food waste on an individual level, which ultimately is going to help us reduce our impact on the climate. I really liked what Shannon said, where she said that, that it's uh, empowering. It's an opportunity to change uh, our current you know, waste stream and what we're contributing. And I want to reiterate that we can significantly reduce food waste as a whole by just making some of these changes, you know, 
do what you can and what works for your family and what is comfortable. And just know that every step, every change that you make, um, even if it's just becoming more mindful and intentional in your shopping, does really make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, especially seems like these days mm -hmm. and I, I hate using that term these days but yeah, um old. yes <laughs> uh but you know there are so many things in the world that are happening right now that we just feel so kind of helpless mm -hmm. in the sense that you know there's such large such big situations um and we feel like our contribution does nothing but this one specifically mm -hmm. we have statistical information that shows us otherwise that that we can do something and it does make an impact exactly so while we'll be sharing tips throughout this entire series on ways that you can contribute to this um, solution today we're focusing on meal planning and smart shopping so again we want to reiterate that by planning ahead by taking initiative beforehand and making a meal prep schedule that works for you and your family you save time in the long run, you reduce wasted food and you also save money, which we cannot express enough how much of a difference that makes um, on a personal level, you know? Don't stretch the wallet any more than you have to. So some different ways to meal prep outside of the insights that we got from Shannon and Selena, who interestingly enough, take very different approaches to meal prepping, but have found solutions that work for them and for their household. Uh, so one of those is schedule based. So this is similar to what both of them do. Um, looking ahead at your schedule and planning quick or easy meals for busy days, like the chicken in the air fryer hack. Maybe you just got off of a 12 hour shift and you know you need to eat, but a box of Cheez-Its won't cut it. Uh, mm -hmm. Knowing that you have something <laughs> set up for this situation, um, it's easy, nutritious, fast, massively helpful. Uh, also theme-based, uh, Selena talked about the pork cabbage or whichever variation she ends up with. I think she said porky cabbage at one time. Yeah, and, uh, yeah that works that too. Kind of made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so running theme-based meal prepping is kind of like uh, giving yourself a starting point to maybe start to plan what you want to eat on certain nights. So making a pizza night, having a crock pot meal night, having soup, pasta, tacos, whatever it is that you throw into that schedule, just giving yourself themes to follow that helps you know what to shop for and also puts you in the right mindset for, you know, how long it's going to take to prep this, how fast or how slow it'll be to get this actually on the table, things of that nature. And then a lot of what Shannon talked about is ingredient-based meal prepping. So working backwards, kind of, from what you have on hand in your pantry and your fridge. So say, for example, you have a ton of kale in your fridge and maybe a ton of pasta noodles. Finding a way to incorporate those two things to make a new dinner which can be done, trust me, I love kale and pasta. Um, rather than going to the grocery store and finding different ingredients and incorporating different things, you can kind of use what you already have. Uh, and I just want to mention, um, if you are interested in that idea of taking what you already have, um, including possible leftovers, you're going to want to listen to our fifth episode because um, Stacy talks a lot about her approach to scrappy cooking and using leftovers. Uh, using what you have available to you mm -hmm. and um, just doing something different and exciting. So tune into that as well. Yeah, it's it's really excited to or exciting to think outside of maybe the rigid boundaries that we've set up for these meals. You know, a lot of people will say that, oh, that food doesn't go in that dish. Um, but that's all just based on each person. I like to put broccoli in ramen. Maybe that's weird. But Not at all. I like it too. <laughs> I like it. Um, so I do it. So finding new ways that you can kind of spruce up things that you have on hand is another great way to reduce food waste in the home and also contribute to that kind of meal prep schedule. And we'll include some links in our show notes to apps that might be helpful with meal prepping. Um, so be sure to check those out. We also wanted to touch on the fact that with 11% of American households having faced food insecurity at some point, it's really vital to honor the food that we purchase and all the resources that went into getting it on your plate, the transportation, all the water it took to grow the food or to feed the food if you're eating meat products or dairy or eggs or anything in that nature. Um, 
So by making concerted efforts to purchase with intention, you're reducing your household waste impact. So shopping locally and cost effectively promotes our agriculture sector, our small businesses, and the reuse industry for liquidator stores like Daily Deals and Grocery Outlet. We'll put information for local sources for that in the show notes as well. Yeah, no, those are all great points and and all things we should continue to consider. Um, And I think, you know, just for our conversation and also for everybody's consideration and knowledge, we would like to talk about food insecurity. Um, It is a very important topic and one that more people struggle with than a lot of us realize. Mm. Um, So food insecurity as a topic kind of, you know, answers why is this important? Um, Why is food waste, especially throwing away food that is edible um, or was edible, why is that important? So if you made it this far, you're probably left with that question. Why does this matter? And to answer that, we have one final definition and that's food insecurity. So if you don't know this already, food insecurity means not having access to enough food that is nutritionally valuable so as to cover one's basic needs. As of 2019, nearly 50,000 people living in Clark County were food insecure, according to Feeding America. So while one third of all food goes uneaten, two billion people face food insecurity globally. So how can a sustainable food cycle help? So we we talked a little bit about the food cycle at large in our last episode. So now we're going to dive into how the individual choice within that food cycle is a great way to aid in this food insecurity problem. So utilizing the tips that we learned from Shannon is a great way to help address food insecurity in our country. Uh, Food insecurity is defined by the USDA, United States Department of Agriculture, as a lack of access at times to enough food for a healthy life. Um, And food insecurity amongst Black or Latino individuals is higher than white individuals in over nine out of every 10 counties. Disparities by race and ethnicity existed before and continue to be stark during the COVID-19 pandemic. And in nearly 99% of countries with comparable data, Uh, Food insecurity amongst black individuals is higher than among white and non-Hispanic individuals. So in addition to people not having access to food because of financial purposes, there's also an equity lens that we have to bring into this. So we've already acknowledged the reasons it's important to honor our food. There are several, several thousands of people in our county that don't have access to enough food. And most of the times that group is intersecting with people from marginalized communities. That's actually a great segue into... Our, our last topic before we end this episode. Um, but we just wanted to address inequity in Shopping Smart um, because there is a lot of inequity. Luckily in Clark County, we have a few different ways that we're addressing this inequity uh, through several farmers markets that provide SNAP market match and the special supplemental nutritional program for women, infants, and children, WIC support, where there can be matched dollar for dollar up to 5 to $40 for free vouchers to spend on fresh fruits, vegetables, herbs, mushrooms, and edible plant starts. Uh, and remember, these are farmer's markets, so these are um, nutritionally healthy, uh, organic, um, typically better for you. And they're local, so there's less emissions required for the transport of that. And it'll last longer because it's not going halfway across the country to get to the market. Yeah, and ultimately you are supporting local farmers. Exactly. Uh, And so those uh, farmers markets are located in Vancouver, Camas, Salmon Creek, and Battleground. And if you're listening to this show from outside of Clark County, I definitely recommend looking up to see if markets in your area do the same. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Some other amazing resources for food insecurity is our Clark County Food Bank. Um, You can also consider purchasing from bulk bins at grocery stores, uh, because this can help minimize your food waste while also being cost conscious. Uh, And I do want to say, you know, the idea of bulk bins is not buying in bulk, but the idea that you can, you can determine how much you want to purchase, because you can just put as much as you want into a bag and, and determine exactly how much you need. Uh, And lastly, we're also lucky to have a robust public transportation system. Uh, And this can help you get to grocery stores and farmer's markets and help provide nutritious foods while minimizing food waste. 
as well as being conscious about um, your emissions and, mm-hmm. and the effects on climate. And we'll put a link in our show notes for more information as well. So uh, one final time, there's plenty of thanks going around in this episode, plenty of giggles. Um, I wanted to thank our guests for coming on and sharing their wisdom. Uh, Please look at our show notes for more references and information. And I will let Austin close us out. To tackle the issue of food waste is to save money, save the environment, and save people. We hope you'll tune in to our next episode where we discuss food waste prevention and children. In the meantime, we hope you reflect on what food waste prevention means to you. See you next time.